up on another episode of Well of Touches People. Uh, continuing with our theme of parenting uh, this month, we know that it can be very exciting. Uh, but also, uh, at the same time, parenting can be quite challenging as well. So how do we know what's best for our children? Uh, well, God created the institution of family. So today, uh, we're going to dedicate uh, a bit of our time to discuss what the Bible says uh about how we can be the best parents for our children. So thank you so much, Omani, for um, being here with us today. How are you doing? Good, good, good. A little good. bit tired, but it's okay. <laughs> I can, yeah. I can, I enjoy it tonight, you know, spend time with you and all the listener. Yeah. You know, and for me, parenting is whatever that you say that uh, enjoy and challenge is true in our lives, you know. Because I have uh, three grown children, you know. So I remember when they were young, you know. Uh, I believe one thing besides uh, I'm a servant of God, I'm a pastor in one church, you know. But through my, through my children, you know, they give you a purpose of life. That's why, you know, uh, it's like you want to give them the, the very best for them. You know, whatever that you have, you want to give it to them. Yeah. That's, that's what I, I enjoyed, you know, beside their, you know, their laughter and giggles and whatever, you know, they, whatever that, uh, the, the children show to you, you know, that mm. I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But, that's that's what I you know I give you know because my children give me the purpose of life. Yeah, well, that's very sweet of you. Om. Maybe let's take a step back in time. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you knew you were going to be a father? How did that feel? Ooh, yeah, I remember. Let's see, nineteen ninety. You know, mm. 1990 in uh, Dallas, Texas, there we were students at that time, student mm. of uh, Bible, Bible College, you know. And when uh, we plan, you know, we plan not to have children, actually, because of the very expensive uh, hospital costs and the doctor costs, and we don't have any insurance at that time. Mm. But finally, uh, one day, uh, we went to the doctor, and the doctor say. Uh, your wife is conceived, yeah, conceiving. So automatically there is a two, you know, two feelings, you know, one exciting, <laughs> excitement and the other one is quite worry also, you know, yeah. but, uh, but that's, uh, that's what, uh, my journey, you know, to, to know God more that He's my provider, you mm. know, not only I'm as a husband or father need to provide for my family, but my source of provide pro- providence is God Himself. You know? mm. So I'm exciting, you know, when I, when the doctor say, uh, your wife is conceiving. Wow. Yeah. Is, is new, new experience for me. Yeah. Wow. What were you concerned about the most besides, I guess, like finances? I think, uh, Inadequacy, you know, about to become a parent, mm. you know, because I don't know, I never thought before at that time, you know, that I can become a good parents. But when I listen to the, you know, to the reality that my wife is conceiving, so at that moment, you know, I'm really leaning on God. You know, mm. because I need his wisdom to become a, a good father, yeah. and specifically godly father. Yeah. Well. So, Om Hani, we know that you have three children. So, how did you, I guess, adjust your parenting to the different personalities of your three children? Three children. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know because uh, I have a, uh, listen, I have a, uh, uh, what you call that one? One daughter. You know, elder daughter Tiffany, and I have uh, two sons, Timothy and Nathan, you know. 
So I believe it's quite different between a girl and a boy. Okay. You know. But I believe uh, we cannot put uh, we cannot play favorism, you know, about amongst them, you know, because you have to really love them equally. Yeah. You know, but I realized that a uh, boy, you know, when I have uh, two boys, you know, two sons, you know, uh, I found out that their thinking, you know, is linear, you know, and, you know, and Tiffany is multitasker. It's totally different, yeah, yeah. you know, and also my sons, you know, they focus on one thing at the time. And Tiffany is is more what what you call it juggling you know juggle several things at once yeah you know so for in case like this you know if I I doing something if I typing or you know on screen or whatever you know and suddenly Timothy uh, or Nathan asking me you know and I'm not stopping you know still typing and just answering their question whatever I think they thought. You know, they thought I'm not listening to them mm. because man is linear. So I have to stop. Yeah. That's why I, I, I treat them, you know, I have to stop from my work okay. and see on their eyes yeah. and listen to them. So they, they understand. But different with Tiffany. Sometimes, mm. you know, when, when I work like that, you know, she asks something and I answer it, you know. And she can, she can, she can take it that one okay. while I'm working and I can answer it, you know, because Tiffany is multitasker. So okay. sometimes she, she work like that too, you know, when, when I see right now in, at home, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other one is, uh, the different is, uh, boy tend to be competitive, you know, mm. because they get their sense of self from achieving, you know. Like, like, uh, with my sons, two sons, I brought them to play soccer. Mm. You know, I joined them with, uh, with a team, soccer team when they were young, young, you know. So they play and they win. I, you know, I treat them in McDonald's or whatever, you know. So that is, uh, like achieving their goal. Yeah. But Tiffany is different. You know, Tiffany or, or girl tend to be cooperative, you know. They get their sense of self from relationship. That's why with Tiffany, I like to watch TV or watch movie. You know, last time is like DVD, you know, DVD that I got from, from Indonesia that we watch together and we love together. We, we talk about the story and everything because mm -hmm. Tiffany more enjoy relationship rather than achieving something. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's the one that I can, you know, I can tell how I raised this tree. Three children with different personality and everything. But one thing that I realized that we cannot do favoritism, favoritism mm -hmm. you know, on our children mm. because it will hurt them, yeah. you know. Okay. Well, well, thank you for sharing, I guess, your stories. Um, they're very, very sweet yeah, and shows how caring you are as a father to your children. Wow. So, um, um I guess, especially as a pastor, um, how do you make sure that your children, I guess, grow up to pick up your faith? Okay. This is a unique one because uh, I believe one thing, you know, everyone have uh, their own way to experience God. You know, we cannot force it. But we can influence as a parents, you know, because... Parents always, as their children, first role model. Mm. We have to remember, as a parents, you know, you are their role model, you know. So they cannot hope, you know. I mean, parents cannot hope to raise godly children unless they firmly committed, you know, to living as a godly parents. Because in Proverbs 22, verse 6, it say like this, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Mm. You know. So there is nothing more worthwhile or a greater importance in this world than of parents to commit themselves to living godly lives and raising righteous and godly children who love 
the Lord. So for just in case like, like, like me, you know, as a pastor, you know, as a pastor, I, I, I teach, you know, I teach my children is like this. This is like practical things that mm. you can do also. You know, the listener can do also. Number one, pray for them. Mm. You know, pray for them. And number two, pay attention to their needs, especially their spiritual needs. You know, number three, teach them how to have relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm. You know, not only to have relationship with one each other, but you know, with the Holy Spirit that they cannot see, but yeah. you know, they can feel or they can sense it, the Holy Spirit there. Number four, teach them the way of the Lord through the scripture. And the last one is train them to practice what the Bible teaches. You know, that's what I practice to my three children. So I think, uh, I'm okay, you know, when I see my, my three grown child, you know, three children grown up, you know, in the Lord and I, I can see the journey of their faith, you yeah. know, but I'm still praying for them. Yeah. Even my daughter already, you know, got married. I'm still praying for them, mm. you know. So if you become a parent, you know, you never stop as your responsibility as a parent. Even you become grand, you know, uh, grand grandfather or grandmother, you still pray for them. Yeah, you know. Oh wow! Because you mentioned uh, about spiritual needs, can you give us some examples of what those needs could look like? Spiritual needs is like this. Sometimes you know you cannot just uh, you feel depressed, you feel uh, broken hearted, you know, you feel whatever, you know. You cannot just go to human. Or your, your, your parents, you know. So, you need to have the right source. How to heal, you know, your, your broken hearted, your distress or whatever. That's why I would like for my children to understand that spiritual things is, is very important in, in their lives, you know. So if they, they connect with the right source, in here, in my, in, in here is a Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And I believe, you know, they, they have, they will have a experience with God at that moment. Mm. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much, Om. Let's, um, I guess let's talk about, I guess, children these days. You know, with the increasing rates of divorce or separation, a lot of children are, I guess, stuck with their moms, but they don't have fathers. What are your thoughts on the rise of fatherless children? Yeah, if, if you Google, you know, the role of, of a father, you know, if you Google the role of a father, you know, this is the first answer that comes up. You know, let me, let me read it for you. Mm. Children look to their fathers to lay down the rules and enforce them. They also look to their fathers to provide a feeling of security, both physical and emotional. You know, children want, want to make their fathers proud, and an involved father promotes inner growth and strength. So this is amazing. Even, you know, from a secular point of view, fathers and father figures have an important role to play in our current generation. Mm. You know, so removing fathers and father figures from society will therefore ob obviously result in problems and some form, form of discord. You know, when, when you told me that so many, you know, children, uh, were lost, you know, in their family, you know, because of the, of the divorce that they, they can see and experience, you know, broken hearted frustration and everything, you know, because I can consider they are the fatherless generation, you mm -hmm. know, they don't have father, you know, and, and if you ask me, you know, do you think our generation, this generation, this generation, you know, it's a fatherless generation. I can tell, you know, from the problems that arises in society right now. So many confusing, 
confusion, sorry, confusion about the gender, the, the gender identity. So many, you know, gang, gang, gang violence, so many drugs involved in the young people's life, you know. But I believe one thing, due to the baby, baby boomers generation experience fatherless. So you know what? The millennial generation, even younger generation, just as the result of the negligence of previous generation. Actually, if you see right now, the generation now, it's not, you know, it's not for them. But, you know, the, the, the cause or the, the root of problem is the generation, you know, before mm. them. Mm. You know, my generation, actually, Andrew, yeah. my generation, baby boomers. Yeah. Because at that time, you know, the spirituality is declining. And also, you know, they don't have uh, any, uh, they don't have any spiritual guides or whatever, you know, spiritual uh, principle in their lives. Mm. You know? So baby boomers, actually, you can, you can point them. There is a, the source is there. Oh, okay. You know? Yep, yep. So, um, I guess in the case of, I guess, children who don't have fathers, is there a way to repair, I guess, the absence of a father? Yeah. yeah. I believe one, one way that I can, I can give, you know, the, the truth from the Bible is because Jesus himself, you know, teach us how to pray to the beloved father in heaven. Mm. We have to call our heavenly father. You know, one, what do you call that one? One figure that can change father as a physical, physical father is just heavenly father. You know exactly that if, if that, that child know heavenly fathers, I believe the emptiness in their lives, you know, it will, it will, uh, it will fulfill by the presence of Heavenly Father. Mm. That's why it's so important, you know, for single parents, you know, specifically here is just mother, you know, to really uh, introduce God or Jesus, you know, as uh, to their children as a spiritual father. Mm. That is very important. Mm. So we talked about how important fathers are, I guess, for children in their development. What is the role of a father specifically in the Bible? The father's role in the Bible, you know, is to, because uh, if, if I check in my Bible, you know, uh, the Bible got influence from the patriarchs, you know, at that mm-hmm. time. Patriarchs means, you know, is men, you know, it's everything is man. You yeah. know, in the Bible, it's usually it's like that, you know. So, the role of the father is very important that we have to understand. In fact, the children must understand that they have to respect. The, even in, in, in the Bible say, respect, honor your father and mother. Mm. You know, that's very important things. And I believe uh, if you talk about about the role of the father, you know, in, in the Bible, they, uh, they have a unique role in the family. Mm. You know. For me, it's like, uh, they need to become initiator in the family. Okay. Initiator means like this, you know, uh, the father must take charge in charge. Mm-hmm. In the family. Why? Because if the children did not see that in their family, in their house, in their home, you know, the children could think that their father is a weak person. Mm-hmm. Their father is not a spiritual leader in their home. Why? Because everything must be, you know, depend on the mother. The mother talk about, let's pray together. Let's have devotion together. Let's go to church, you know. Actually, 
it must be the father mm. to become initiator mm. you know? and also the three you know the uh, father as a protector father is as a, as a provider you know uh, father father as a leader you know that must be fulfilled if you become a father that's the role you know of a father mm-hmm. that is very important things you know? so sometimes you know when i see right now you know so many times the mother take in charge you know and let the father a figure decreasing you know mm. before their children's eyes mm. that is very dangerous in this this kind of generation okay yeah so how does it compare to the role of the mother then okay you you mean you mean the differences between the role of the mother and the father yeah okay mm. uh let's see from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 You know, it's quite interesting at that time. Apostle Paul wrote the letter, you know, after he repeat the comment for the children to honor their father and mother. And then he said to the father like this, and you, you know, father, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the, the Lord. So I thought like this, where is the, the comment for the mother? Sometimes, hmm. you know, you, you don't see that. But I remember one thing, you know, the role of the mother, you can, you can check in Proverbs chapter 31. You, know, you can, you can have a list over there, you know, the role of the wife and also the role of the mother, hmm. you know, everything there. So I have a conclusion like this, you know, so I think there is a both slash N, yeah, both and N, you know, In the Bible, both mom and dad are responsible to give commencement and give teaching. You know, specifically if you read in the book of Proverbs, you know, talk about the teaching of a mother mm. as well of the father. Mm. So a parental, a parental team confronts this child with the will of God and godliness. You know, the, uh, I, I, I mean like this, you know, you have to become a good team. Yep. you know for your children mm-hmm. you know you cannot just you know children right now is is so clever you know they can they can go to the mother and the mother say no and they go to the father and the father say yes and after that you know they just they just uh, they just told you know my father told me like this and you like this and both the parents you know get quarrel and mm-hmm. fight one each other and everything and they can play you know they can play the parents you know Yeah. the children now but yeah. you have to become good team between husband and wife between father and mother mm. so the children will learn about authority at mm. in the home you know mm-hmm. so they they can honor father and mother you know exactly uh, according to the scripture yeah i think that's my answer andrew okay wow thank you om we've um We've talked about how important it is for, I guess, for parents to be a role model to the children. We've talked about how uh, important it is to introduce uh, the father, I guess, the heavenly father, as a father to children, especially these days, because of the, I guess, the absence of of fathers in most children's households. Yeah. Let's talk about um, some application. Uh, these days, a lot of parents are, I guess working full time both parents are working full time how can we make sure i guess how can the parents make sure that they can raise i guess a health uh, i guess a healthy individual when they're away at work yeah, so yeah. like so often in the day yeah absolutely that's a very important question you know from my perspective children spell love is not l o v they spell love is T I M E time you know so if you are working because you don't want to spend time with your children you know if you are working here is a is a you know a father and mother both of them working and they don't want to spend time with the, with their children i think the parents will reap the irresponsibility of action 
you know, the parents will suffer in the later day. I, I saw, you know, so many parents will make a worthy decision that they must sacrifice one of their spouse job just to stay with their, their children. Mm. Okay. The familiar term, you know, in Australia is house husband. Mm. You know, you know, for us men, sometimes we don't want people know that if we are house husband, you know, yeah. you know, because we thought that it's a, it's a lesson job, you know, it's not, it's not something that you need to be proud of, you mm. know. But actually, if they know about the important things for their children, you know, how the character will be built, you know, how their self-identity will, 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 you know, they will have it, self-identity, you know. Actually, even house husband, even house husband is, is a ministry. Mm. It's very important. You have to understand this one. You know, the best way, the best way, this is just in case husband and wife, ah, sorry, uh, father and mother, both of them working. Mm. You know, the best way, if they have parents, their parents, their parents, so the grand, grandfather yeah, or grand, you know, yep. helping take care of their grandchildren. Mm. You know, that's the best, you know, the best way or ideal way, you know. Yeah. But always remember this, even your grandparents, you know, or even your parents take, uh, take care of your children, you know, always remember this because your parents already grew you up. So for so many years, you know, don't you think that too much for them to take care of your children? Mm. So that's why if you want to use them as a, a carer or, you know, taking care of your children, please make a wise decision. Mm. Not, <laughs> not for the long period, you know, yeah. you have to make decision, the wise decision, you know, but sometimes, you know, parents, parents, uh, have a shortcut like this. Just put our children, young, specifically young kids, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, uh, not a school age yet. Yeah. You know, they put in childcare, they put in play school or whatever, you know, mm. but for me, this is my perspective, you know, I believe some of you don't agree with me, but that is not ideal solution. Mm. Why? Because one thing, they cannot, you know, the school cannot replace your roles, father and mother, you know, in the children's life. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And the second one, this is my experience. So many children got sick after they enrolled in childcare or play <laughs> school due to passing germs, you know, yeah. one kid to another kid. Yeah. You know, so you put, yeah, you earn more money, but actually it suffer you, you know, mm. when you see your children got sick with, with any different, uh, different, different kind of diseases, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's so painful, you know. My experience is like this, when I see, when I experience my, my, when, when I see my, my children got sick, you know, I sometimes I, I pray to God, Lord, better I got sick rather than they got sick. Mm. You yeah. know, because it's, it's so painful in your heart, you know, specifically if you, if you know it's not easy, you know, it's not, if not, uh, it's quite, the, the disease is quite hard or whatever, you know. Cool. I think that's that's my 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 answer, Andrew. Yeah. Well, so there's um, I guess for parents who are both working, there needs to be some form of sacrifice or compromise, depending on what they yeah. think is most important in their lives. Yeah. Absolutely. No. So the father and mother need to, you know, talk together, make wise decisions. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Yep. Wow. All right. Thank you so much, Om, for your time today. Th Thank you that, uh, for the time you've given us to discuss about fathers and mothers and the biblical pers perspectives of parenting. 
Is there anything else you'd like to add for the listeners? Yeah, I think uh, I, I can add this one because I realized like this. Children cannot raise themselves. Mm-hmm. So they need parents to raise them up in the right way, God's way. You know, because I realized that humans are not designed for self-raising. That's, that's why, you know, uh, uh, God created parents you know, to love, to nurture, to care for, to train the children to become mature, you know, happy, successful, productive, and well-adjusted adult. Mm. You know, when I see right now all my, my children, you know, facing, uh, facing challenges in their lives, you know. So sometimes I just pray, Lord, you know, uh, make all the wisdom that I already invested in their lives really work in their lives, you know. Mm. And I believe the second one is, uh, God designed children for play, you know. For play. That's how they learn, you know, how they become creative and how they grow. Because children learn to socialize and relate to other people properly through play, mm. not through work. You cannot let your children to play by themselves. You need to spend time with them in playing and learning about everything that they will face it on the later years. Mm. You know, that's why, you know, sometimes people just, just say to me, you know, when I ask them, I ask, like, I, I ask like this, Andrew, you know, which one are more important, a quality time or a quantity time? What is your answer if I ask you like, which one do you, uh, you, 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 quality time or quantity time? Well, I don't know, both. Both? Yeah. Yeah. That is very important because majority, you know, majority, just give their answer a quality time. Mm. But I ask, you know, I add another question like this. How can you have a quality time without spend a quantity time? You know, mm. that's why play with your children makes them love you more and makes you a better person. Yeah. I can guarantee this one. If you play with your young children, mm-hmm. you know, they will love you more. And with that time, you know, it makes you a better person. Yep. You are more under, understand, uh, understanding about other people, mm-hmm. you know. I think that's, that's my, my conclusion, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, Om. Thank you so much for your time tonight. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you.